Although Trio's pivotal condensation method seems to save time in looking for the determinant, a simple but significant condition should be satisfied. That is, there should be a pivot element valued at positive 1. In case there isn't, the method might be risky. Another shorter determinant method is GBEMIS, although presently it is only used for 4x4 four four matrices. The method used is very similar with Sarah's rule, with a few tweaks. Thus, it is also called extended Sarah's rule. Remember that since this method has just been approved recently, it just applies to 4x4 four four matrices. Probably there would be more innovations to bigger matrices later. Having a 4x4 four four matrix, just like the matrix example shown, we can identify that there are four columns. To easily determine which is which, elements in each column are color-coded. We call them C1 until C4. JBMIS method creates three matrices, including the original where columns 2 to 4 are rotated. That means, the first matrix uses the original C1, C2, C3, and C4 columns, in that order. Add to this matrix the second with the initial rotation, reflecting C1, C3, C4, then C2 in the end. And yet, another matrix is added having columns C1, C4, C2, and C3. Now let's do the extended Saris rule starting from the initial partial matrix. The tweak is to place alternating signs with every factor. First is to reflect the first three columns, then multiply elements. The first diagonal covers the elements 3 times 0, with 4 and negative 1. This diagonal is preceded by a positive sign. The second diagonal has 2, 3, another 2, and 4, which equals to 48. But this time, this diagonal is preceded by a negative. The third diagonal contains negative 3 multiplied by another negative 3 times negative 2 with negative 1, and it is also preceded by a positive. The product is positive 18. Then the last diagonal contains negative 2 times 2 times 1 and another 2, preceded by a negative. The product is negative 8, but then turns into positive 8 due to the preceding negative sign. Add all the positives to get negative 22. Also work on the negatives. The first anti-diagonal covers 4 times 1 times 3 times negative 2, and this time it is preceded by a negative sign. The product turns out as negative of negative 24, making it positive 24. The second anti-diagonal has negative 1, times 4, times negative 3, and positive 3. This time, this is preceded by a positive sign, giving positive 36. The third contains 2's for all elements, and before them is a negative, producing negative 16. Then the last antidiagonal has negative 1, times negative 2, with 0 and negative 3, resulting to 0. Add all the negatives to come up with positive 44. After which, do the next step as to subtract the negatives from the positives. That is, negative 22 minus 44, giving negative 66. For the second term, 
the matrix starts with the first column followed by the third, fourth, and second column. The rotation places the second column at the end, pushing forward columns three and four. The positives start with the first diagonal covering three, three, two, and negative one, resulting to negative 18. The second diagonal has negative three, another negative three, then one, and four, giving positive 36. But the preceding negative sign makes it negative 36. The third diagonal has negative two times zero times negative two again, then two, which gives zero. Then the last diagonal multiplies two, two, four, and negative one, preceded by a negative. The product is the negative of negative 16, providing positive 16. Add all products in the positives, giving negative 38. The negatives of the second term starts with the anti-diagonal of 4, 4, negative 3, and 2, preceded by a negative sign, which results to the negative of negative 96 or positive 96. The next anti-diagonal has 2, 2, 0, and 3 preceded by a positive, and it results to 0. The third anti-diagonal has negative 1, 1, 2, and negative 3, giving negative of positive 6, or negative 6. The last anti-diagonal contains negative 1 times negative 2 with 3, and another negative 2 preceded by a positive, and this results to negative 12. Adding all products, we get the negatives as positive 78. To finalize the second partial determinant, we take the positives and subtract the negatives. That is negative 38 minus 78, giving out negative 116. The third term rotates the columns once more, this time having C1 to start just the same, then C4, C2, and C3. After mirroring the three columns, compute for the positives using the diagonals. The first one has 3 times negative 3 with 1 and 2, giving out the positive of negative 18 or simply negative 18. The second diagonal has the factors negative 2, 0, 4, and yet another 4, preceded by negative, resulting to 0. The third has the factors 2, 3, negative 2, and negative 1, preceded by a positive, and this all makes positive 12. The last diagonal has negative 3, with 4, another 2, and negative 1 with a negative before, and this gives negative 12. Add all products to have negative 18 for the positives. The negatives for the third term start with the product of 4, 2, 0, and negative 3, preceded by a negative, but ends up as 0 just the same. Next is the anti-diagonal with negative 1, 1, 3, and another 3 preceded by a positive and resulting to negative 9. The third has negative 1 multiplied by 4, then 2, and negative 2 with a negative before it. The product comes out as negative 16. The last has 2, negative 2, negative 3, then positive 2 preceded with a positive. The last product is positive 24, and the negatives are simplified as negative 1. So placing positives minus negatives, the third term comes out as negative 17. After completing all the three determinants, we just add them up. Negative 66 
plus negative 116 plus negative 17, giving the determinant of the 4 by 4 matrix as negative 199.